everyone, it's Amir from Toy Snowman, and I'm here in Japan, and I'm doing what the, I do best, hunt for the latest and greatest toys. Today I wanted to give it also a few pointers on how to save money while shopping for toys in Japan. For those who are wondering, like, oh, Japan's really expensive to go to. No, like, I mean, here I am in Canada, and for nine days and hotel plus the flight back and forth from Canada in Montreal to, to Tokyo cost me $2,000 Canadian. So that's about 1,400 US dollars. I think that's relatively inexpensive for a trip all the way across the world. But yeah, all right, let's go off with our first pointers of how to save money. First of all, one of the easiest ways to save money is to take advantage of the tax-free system. Tax-free. 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 Many stores in Japan offer tax-free shopping for foreigners. Me and you, we actually get a cheaper price than Japanese people in Japan. Just look for the tax-free signs or ask the staff if they offer it. In order to get tax-free shopping, you need to meet a few requirements. First of all, you need to get, have a non-Japanese passport. And you need to be staying in Japan for less than six months, which is pretty easy when you're just visiting. <laughs> Secondary, your total purchase has to be above 5,500 yen. So about, about $55 Canadian, you know, excluding the tax and um, the stores that participate in it. The thing you gotta do is when you are traveling is to bring your passport if you want to get the tax free. So when you enter Japan, they will put on your passport, your visa, which will have a QR code. The shopkeepers will need to scan that QR code in order to get your tax free benefit. Yeah, and that's about it. So it's, that's a pretty easy way to save 10% on all your purchases when you're buying because one of the stores I went to, they offered it. So it's a simple process. You can buy also toys, clothing, shoes, laptops, whatever you want. Just save that 10%. Now, when you go to Japan, they do offer like a QR code thing, but some of the stores, they're not yet integrated into that, the new systems. I still recommend just using your passport rather than the QR code on your passport because the Japanese travel website is not yet fully accepted in every Japanese store. While we're trying to save money and buy as many figures as possible, we have to do one thing first, which is transportation. So transporting in Japan is very easy if you can get around and read Japanese. But for us who can't read Japanese... Oh my god! Wow! Um, cheapest method for us in Japan is by far still using the public transport, which is the trains and metros all throughout Japan. One of the harder things about this is that all the trains are owned by different private companies so they all charge fares at different rates and you gotta know what you gotta pay for, from one destination to another destination and you gotta calculate if you're gonna be doing transfers and whatnot but there is something called an IC card here in Japan and well the IC card is if you just tap it it'll, it will calculate how much your fare is once you reach your end destination when you tap the machine at the exit so we're gonna go and uh, refill it right now something like this is really convenient for us and for anybody who just can't do math like me who doesn't want to do calculations of how much I should be paying from this start to the end I highly recommend the Plasmo card for getting around all of Tokyo and most of Japan I also want to say that these cards are available at the airport terminals and most of the stations and you can just buy them almost automatically but I recommend just going to the once you arrive it's one of the first things you should do is get your IC card because um, well, it just allows you to try to go anywhere in Japan much cheaper than any taxis or other methods that you might be thinking of because um, a simple trip around Tokyo might cost anywhere between one to five dollars but a taxi will cost anywhere between ten and thirty dollars to go around Tokyo so it's very much efficient to get one of these Plasmo cards and go around Tokyo plus it makes it easy so that you don't need to understand the destination's values and costs I'm just going to charge my card here. You can just put it in the machine or that you got. I highly recommend using the Plasmo or Suica card. So you can get this at, at any train stop essentially in Japan. Uh, so even at the airport when you're using the train. So it's essentially just like a all in one. It's like a credit card, but except it's good for transportation and most like convenience stores except, except it and even vending machines. Just by using that for your bus fare, it's a reloadable like Visa card essentially. And it's accepted on most train lines, buses, subways. And now you can go around fumbling without having to deal with. It's saying if you are here and you want to go to here, it will cost you 410. But if you want to go here, 830 because it's the new line and you turn for it. So just have the card, let it decide it for you. Best of all, it's convenient. So like you don't need to calculate your how much you need to pay. It's just you tap and then when you exit, it'll calculate how much you cost at your exit. You're good to go. So I definitely recommend it. And the card costs five dollars. Don't forget to go to the counter where you got your card and return it once you're done with your trip. You'll get your five dollars back 
plus you'll get any money that you have left inside. It's pretty easy, you just go to the counter and ask them for a return. Hello, I'd like to return. No. Thank you. Arigato. <coughs> To save money also, you should definitely use something called uh, recycle shops in Japan. Oh, I should have saved my money. They're also, no, I'm gonna butcher how you say it, but they're called Suika in Japanese. So S-O-U-K-A-I-Y-A. -A. They're essentially specializing in um, selling secondhand toys, but some of them are like super brand new. Or, by secondhand, they mean second ownership, right? So some guy could just be a mint and box collector and he brings it to these recycle shops, they're called. And well, it's like, I'll show you right now, like the Godzilla I got, that one was, was from Mandrake, which is also a recycle shop and it's essentially brand new. It's just like even the tail was not, un, not unwrapped, but it's the second owner. So here I am now buying it and it's a good way to save money because these are discounted items. You know, they're cheaper because you're buying it from a secondhand shop. Quick tip, also visit stores early in the morning, the weekday to avoid crowds and get your first pick of new items. Because a lot of items, you know, we're collectors, right? So the same thing in here, we all line up to the store and try to get items as quick as possible. But also it's a good way to get exclusives and new releases for limited time items. Carrying toys is very tiring, so let's get the next fresh water. <laughs> Okay, so now we know how to save money, how to travel around, and what to look for. So grab your craft dinner from your microwave, and I'll uh, show you places that I personally went shopping in Tokyo. Vlog style. If you're a fan of geek culture, you'll probably want to come to a place called Akihabara. I mean, I'll correct the spelling once I get there. But essentially, this is where the metropolitan place for all geeks and Japanese culture that we in the West are used to. So. Just look for any strange looking building, like red and nerdish, and you'll know that that's where you can get a lot of good merchandise for uh, your Japanese needs. Um, try to avoid all the maids that are all trying to take you to the maid cafes, and uh, you should be fine. So, once you're done with all the maid cafes, and you do decide to enter one of these toy stores, be ready for five to nine levels of just this toy stores, each for having its own toy store. They all try to differentiate a bit. Some, some of them might be like card shops with Pokemon and Magic. Other ones might be dedicated model kit stores. Other ones just dedicated plastic stores or a video game store. It is a fun thing, so I definitely recommend going through some of these. Do remember to drink some water because it is tiring going up through all these different toy stores and levels. Look at this stuff here. Oh my. There's some cool statues. Uh, hmm. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? I don't know. My dude, this is not how you cut a fish. Ass up in the air. The Gundam base in Tokyo is absolutely a massive store with every possible model kit that you could ever want from Bandai. Um, I definitely recommend going there. It is absolutely beautiful. You see a bunch of model kits. This, all the model kits have, you know, essentially built versions that you can see, and at the same time, they're all available at the store. They run workshops there at different times throughout the day, so you can obviously just, you know, build your model kits there. And they all obviously have their own exclusives. Uh, I definitely recommend the Gundam base in Tokyo. All right, so I was going to get my tax refund for the Godzilla stuff I just bought, but then I came across this on my way up towards the sixth floor so it is well essentially in the, the dollars toy place and then there's a giant toy section over there so everything here is like a dollar to like three dollars i guess like 300 yen being three dollars and 100 yen being a dollar so it's like a, a lot of random toy knickknacks look at this place this place is crazy and this is a lot of anime. I mean, obviously, there's gonna be anime's gonna be very popular. 
Hey, look at this. We got these things. Oh, our price point's about the same, too. Oh, I know that one. Transformers. This is that Galvatron. Wow. Galvatron's going for $108 here. Oh, looks like they got the new wave in of Transformers. 53. That's uh, slightly more expensive than in Canada, but. Oh, Golden Convoy, that's pretty good. Oh, it's all the. Look, look guys, they're international peg warmers. It's a new generation. Mr. Worldwide. Mr. Worldwide. Flow Rider. Oop. $40. I mean, I guess she is popular. Oh, that's really cool. That's the carnage. The Yamaguchi. Oh, they got the anti theft thing here. It's pretty cool stuff. So, uh, a good trick is to figure out the price in Canadian dollars. You just uh, remove the first two numbers because essentially it's in like 500 cents, so that's five dollars. So, just remove that and that's how you know the price. Or at least that's what I do. Otherwise, I'm horribly over or underspending. <laughs> a lot of Gundam kits here. So I think the, the boxes that are like monocolored are supposed to be like event exclusives. Okay, I'm going back to the toy section because that's, I feel more familiar with it. So we passed the Gundams. Oh, I feel like I should get one of these Gundams. These are kind of cool. Like, give me something to do. Is it really that easy to build? God hand. Oh, okay, yeah, we, we're getting some of these actually. Or, no, I think I have the Bandai ones coming up. Okay, well, Malika's section here is huge. I wish I knew what 50% what it meant. I wonder how many people actually paint stuff in, like, back home. Nobody has asked me actually for paint kits. Gotta catch up. Oh. Tamashi Nations. Let's go. So this is a Tamashi Nation store in Tokyo. It's pretty big, um, obviously here. So Kamen Rider is like super popular in Japan. So they have like right in the front have Kamen Rider. Now the interesting about the Tamashi stores in Tokyo, well, so they have labels on all, and pricing on all the products that they, they do sell there. It's not many products, but it's more of a display room. But so if you can see the gold products are means that they're exclusive only to Tokyo Tamashi Nations. Red is stuff that's available on the Tamashi website and blue are just regular inventory that you can buy at most retail shops. The Godzilla store in Japan, Tokyo, Shinjuku. It's a part of a mall area. If you look around, there's other stores nearby. The Godzilla store was that it was kind of it was really small for what I thought it would was I was hoping for it to be. Um, I don't know. It was in my head like Godzilla is, you know, a pretty big Japanese franchise. So I thought the Godzilla store would be a lot bigger and would at least have its own store. But since it's it's a shared space, I guess because you know rent must be expensive in. Tokyo, but at the same time, I thought the franchise would be able to afford <laughs> its own like <laughs> shop, I guess. Um, at the same time, it is it is a small place, and there's not as much Godzilla merchandise as I guess I would like to see. I mean, the most thing I was able to get was one figure and and a few shirts. Um, but yeah, you're much better off like I guess looking for Godzilla stuff at uh, dedicated toy stores across Japan. All right, buddy. Well, thank you for. Uh the Godzilla store in Japan, just in case you wanted to know what it looked like. It is the Gashpon shop. So this is one where you get like random stuff. So this is like the biggest one, I believe, in uh, Tokyo. Somebody can fact check me later. I don't even know where to have a look at here. There's so many things. Uh, maybe I'll try my luck on one of these things. I just don't know which one I want to try. Sharks? Geckos? Oh, I think a gecko is kind of cool. Look at that detail. Uh, how much are they? Five dollars? Alright, well, um, kind of cool. Ooh, what is that? Oh, it's got like mini Gundams. That's so cool. I really want that now. Hmm, decisions will be made today. So, one second. 
So Jenny likes these three and uh, she doesn't like that one so I said that's a pretty good ratio that you know you have 75% chance of getting what you want. Here she likes these two but doesn't like the other three so I think the odds are bad. I personally would tell her to go for the big butt but she doesn't want to go for that so we're gonna try here. Oh no, it's the one you don't like, I think. Oh. No! <laughs> well, that's unlucky. <laughs> Are you that machine? Yeah. Give us a cute one. What if they're all that? What have we got? Hey everybody, it's Amir and we are in front of Hobby Link Japan in Sano Station. Yep. This is my friend Kuni. Hello, how are you? And he's gonna show me the whole warehouse and uh, let's have a look. Alright, we got an item and we're gonna try and pack it. We're following Kunai. And for those who don't know, Hobby Link Japan is an online store from Japan and they sell, well, a whole bunch of uh, Japanese stuff. So definitely check them out, hobbylinkjapan.com and uh, see if you find anything cool. And let them know that Toy Snowman has sent you. What are you doing right now? I'm picking the item now. So this is the one that I need to pick. Fine. This guy's getting a whole case? Yeah, this customer bought five pieces, so let's focus. And order is done. Order is done, now we're off to packing. As we are in the second floor, this takes it to the bottom floor where the shipping can be done. It's very important to recycle. So where does the box come from? The uh, elevator over there. Orders are picked up from here. Yeah, picked up, so it's done. Okay. And our box is right there. A mountain of boxes. Here yeah, we're gonna pack and Bo boxes. All right. So, good enough, I guess. Mm. All right, and it uh, goes onto the order. Oh, Sheep are crossing. I have to do it. Get ready. Get that. Where else biggest crossing? <laughs> I've done too many 360s, I've lost my way. Ah, uh, yes, I'll just walk this way! <laughs> no idea where I'm going now. I just chose the direction it ran. Well, may as well show what I bought in Japan, right? Because it wouldn't be a, a proper video without showing toys, right? So I'll just start from what I'm excited to. To super excited to. So starting off with the uh, the Godzilla, I'll do a close up. Here we go. It's a burning Godzilla, so I got it from the Godzilla store. Um, I just noticed that his tail here is not fully colored, but it's like showing here that it's it's different parts. So hopefully this is how it just is, and I guess it's a production way of saving money because the head looks very normal. And so I'm thinking the head and the tail parts were just reused, add them together. Hopefully it's not like defective one that I didn't bother to look at. But uh, yeah, I mean it's burning Godzilla, and I don't have many of them, so I decided why not? About twenty bucks. Next is Hello Kitty Gundam mix. I might be getting them in the store actually, so this might have been just like a bad purchase on my end because like it's not exclusive or anything there. Don't judge me, Vader. I didn't know. I don't know. It was like seventeen dollars or something. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll just buy it and. 
that I looked at my pre-orders and it looks like I might be getting some in the store. So I went to Tamashi Nations. I got some of these stuff here. Oh wait, well I guess let's finish the Godzilla store. So I got myself a Godzilla t-shirt. Zoom. It was a good amount of, uh, I don't know, I think it was like 20, 30, 40 dollars. For. But yeah, it looks like a cool shirt. I got XL because in Japan, I am fat. I know it's not a toy, but I'm a Godzilla fan. I bought a lot of Godzilla stuff. So. I think that looks cool. It's Godzilla versus the giant wave. Just says Godzilla in the front. Yeah, and then so the back is a giant wave. Then I got a Ghidorah. Because, you know, sometimes you're the bad guy, sometimes you're the good guy. And here, this one's also pretty cool. It's also, I still really love the colors of it. It's uh, the gold and the blue. Yeah, it's Ghidorah and the wave also. This I don't know what's wrong with the wave, but I mean, I know it's popular. Yeah, I just love it. It looks wicked. So in Tamashi Nations, I was able to get some of these. These are the, the Tamashi Nations. So they were the ones that were like gold labeled or something. So that they're only Tamashi Nations uh, Tokyo available. I was like, oh, this one. This one's a pretty cool looking thing. I never, well, obviously I never didn't see any of them. So I just figured, ah, may as well have an SD. May as well be this one. I went to the... Gundam base store in the Tokyo mall. It's the one with a giant Gundam outside the mall. And uh, so I got this one. This is another SD kit. So they seem to have like three versions of uh, this particular Gundam. It's the Unicorn Perfectability Gundam. All I know is that this is only exclusive to their store. So I figured I may as well snag it. Yeah, I got all three versions. So I got this is the, so that was the SD. This is the real grade. I got multiples because I don't know. I just did, all right? Uh, this was the master grade version of it, so it's the same one. Uh, I'll show more pictures, I guess, of it online, but yeah, it just and it looks really cool. And there's this one looks similar to the regular Unicron that we have in store, except this is blue rather than. And the one I'm most super excited for was this one. You might have saw a bit of it in the video. I was like drooling over it. I got this one from Mandrake Pan. It was like seventy-five dollars or something Canadian. Um, I'm pretty happy with it. I mean, this one I'm just probably gonna display it and in the store. It's pretty big and it looks nice, so... Oh! My god! Oh! <laughs> I spent like the extra dollar to get like the Godzilla bag from the Godzilla store. It's just, I don't know, kind of cool. And yeah, here it is. It's almost like an unboxing. So I was, this is probably the, my prized purchase from Japan. Oh, it smells like Japan. And then it's fresh Japanese air. So look at that. I don't know. This one just looked awesome. I figured, you know, 75 bucks. I, um, there's no way I'm going to find this here in this part of the, the ocean. And this is his tail. Uh, goes in his butt. Like that. But yeah, so that is my haul. Well, thank you for watching this journey. Hopefully you're done eating your food while watching my videos. Otherwise, you know, as always, stay frosty. Goes in his butt. Uh, in the butt. Oh, look at that. That is that toxic plastic. Oh, you know, it's not super articulated, but it's super cool. Oh, stomp. Look at this stumpy saw. Five points of articulation. One, two, three, four, five. Literally just five. Oh, yeah, maybe tail six ish. Freedom!